In the last year or so, we have seen many attempts by the enemy of souls to move certain politicians into passing laws that are purposely designed to not only mock the God of creation, but persecute his people as well. It seems each week I post on the main site at remnantofgod.org an article regarding the need for Sunday laws. The media has jumped all over this so much that I feel it's necessary to share these facts with as many as possible. This is why I'm making this video, in fact. In the last five weeks or so, we have seen many instances in the media where we see the powers that be are, in fact, setting things up to make enforcing Sunday laws much easier for the Antichrist in Rome. What I would like to do in this video is share just a few of the articles that are listed on my Sabbath attack page at remnantofgod.org. This first article is titled, A Dangerous Christian Movement Influencing Bachman and Perry. According to an article published by the Daily Beast Sunday, GOP presidential candidates Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry have deep ties to a fringe fundamentalist movement known as Dominionism. Dominionism is defined as the tendency of politically active conservative Christians trying to control government, or, as prophecy calls it, Roman Catholic prelates. Need I remind you what the Vatican stated not too long ago? They stated this in the New York Globe on December 14, 1930, and this was actually from an official Jesuit magazine for the U.S. at the time. They said the old Protestant culture is about at the end of its rope. Why can't we make the U.S. Catholic in legislation, Catholic in justice, aims, and ideals. Go to the URL you see on the screen now for even more strange statements of the priests and their desire to control all government agencies around the world. This is a must if they expect to enforce their Sunday laws. This next article is titled, Texas Governor Rick Perry Lifted Up as a God. Running against Perry is like running against God. Everything breaks his way. Either he's the luckiest guy in the world or the Lord is taking care of him. Is it to be this man that will bring about the wrath of Rome upon God's people? Or are they merely setting the stage for a man worse than he? Rome knows the remnant people know exactly what's happening here. We know they flaunt this man and their prophesied melding of church and state before our eyes to try and generate fear in the hearts of God's people. But have we not prepared for this day? Brothers and sisters, as you see the wicked of the world claiming our God protects and blesses their evil designs, can you still sit idly by? Or are you prepared to do as our God prophesied we would do? After all, the wicked have already declared they will do as prophecy said they would. Now this next article is titled, National Church to Open Sunday 2011 Promo. September 18th, 2011 is National Back to Church Sunday. Grace Fellowship Ministries at Wesley Chapel will be participating in this national campaign this year. Now, as we see more politicians speaking as preachers today, we are sure to see more preachers speaking as politicians. The mixing of church and state is not only Rome's expressed and often written desire, it's prophetic fulfillment for our day. As they grow bolder in their religio-political stance, they will push their Vatican dogma from nation to nation. Then, as the calamities grow, they will then proclaim Sunday as a way to bring help from on high that will stop the calamities, when in fact, that is exactly what brings his wrath upon them. For they boldly deny his law. The children of God will proclaim on that day. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. That's, of course, Psalms 119, verse 126. This next article is titled, FBI Wants Businesses Watching for Customers Paying with Cash. Just days after the White House announced a community-based approach to combating terrorism in the United States, the FBI and other agencies are asking managers of surplus stores to spy on their customers, watching whether they pay in cash, make extreme religious statements, or purchase products such as waterproof matches. Now, not many surplus stores will comply with this, of course, but some will. Soon cash will become obsolete when they play this political game up as much as they can. Rome cannot enforce the mark of the beast when it comes to removing the people's ability to buy and sell, if cash is still available. So, keep your eyes on this. Right before they completely remove cash from society, watch how the media starts to report on how some are using cash to purchase weapons or other dangerous items. So, they will make it appear to be in the people's best interest that cash be removed. Some will doubt this can occur because we need cash to survive. But I say to you, open your eyes. We haven't needed cash now for almost a decade. The method by which to successfully remove cash is already set in place. The credit cards, direct deposit, auto pay options on the banks, 
they're already using this, and they're, and they're ready and waiting for the other shoe to drop. This is all they're waiting for. Removing cash is inevitable if their plans are going to work. Still, as Christians, we are not to worry. We have been promised that our bread and waters shall be sure in Isaiah 33, 16. Now, this next article is titled, Christian Wants Atheist Registry. Florida pastor Michael Stahl has suggested that an organization and website be created that would keep track of known atheists. The website would list by city and state all atheists with their photos and some personal information such as place of business. It would not include a physical address which seems to contradict one of the main purposes of the site. The 501c3 pastors now have the official capacity to lobby law since Bush signed them in as government agencies on March 7, 2006. See more info about this on my 501c3 page on the website or the Image of the Beast Made Alive page on the website. Now, this pastor is merely flexing his newfound muscles. That's all he's doing. The other toss of the coin in this is how they will use such registries against remnant Christians who go into hiding when the mark of the beast is enforced. This next article is titled, National Back to Church Sunday Set for September 18th. Back to Church Sunday, a national movement to reverse declining church attendance and encourage former churchgoers to rediscover church, will be celebrated September 18th across the country. Since its inception, more than 3.5 million invitations from over 7,400 churches have been extended to unchurched people to attend the special service. Okay, one can see... This is stage one for Antichrist to get as many of the unchurched citizens used to attending church. Stage two, of course, will be to convince everyone that attending church on Sunday will stop the ever-increasing calamities. When will that day come? Well, as soon as Rome is sure they can control every citizen across the nation. Of course, they won't be able to control the elect. When they discover how we refuse to obey man over God, the laws will be put in place that prophecy calls the enforcement of the Mark of the Beast. All right, this next one's titled, Obama Tears Up Constitution. In his two years and nine months in office, Barack Obama has compiled a spectacular record of non-compliance with the Constitution. Here are just some of the ways his administration has failed to execute the laws while using raw, unauthorized power. Now, what many are aware of is, not only has Rome stated in writing that they, the Catholics, must penetrate wherever possible in the administration of civil affairs. All Catholics should do all in their power to cause the constitution of states and legislation to be modeled on the principles of the true church. And this is the encyclical of Leo XIII. Now, Rome has caused the change of most constitutions of Middle Eastern countries, all of Europe, and now she's focusing on America. If you look around the world now, you'll see that those that refuse to change their constitutions are presently at war or about to be at war if they continue to refuse. Why? Well, unless the constitutions are changed, they have no legal way to enforce the Sunday laws. And by the way, this changing of the constitution was prophesied to happen. See the URL on your screen for more information. This next article is titled, Jail or Church? Starting next week, the program will allow a city judge to sentence misdemeanor offenders to work off their sentences in jail and pay a fine, or go to church every Sunday for a year. Offenders who select church can pick the place of worship, but must check in weekly with the pastor and the police department. Now, think about this. Forcing people to go to church is a bold violation of both a biblical doctrine and constitutional law regarding the separation of church and state. But then this is exactly what prophecy says the Roman Catholic Church will force all nations to do in our day. That being said, are you ready for what's about to happen? Are you sure? This next article is titled, Ten Commandments of Zambia. For the first time, this country has a Catholic president, and our government will support the church, Seda said, recalling that the nation was predominantly Catholic. Now, the problem with his statement is, number one, the commandments of the Roman Catholic Church are not the commandments of the Bible. And number two, the Vatican is home to the Antichrist. Still, this was prophesied, and this event does in fact declare we are that much closer to home when governments openly declare their loyalty to the Antichrist. Rest assured, this will cause true Christians in Zambia to be persecuted in the coming days. Okay, this next article is titled, Scott Misses Game Because of Faith. Murray refuses to play on Sundays, saying it would go against his religious principles that came to the fore when he was recovering from injury in 2005. 
Ian Murray is discounted because it's Sunday. In years past, this would never be an issue. But in today's media, wherein Rome needs all the help they can get, one can rest assured any celebrity choosing to keep the Roman Sabbath holy, as if it was the Christian Sabbath, is bound to make news. All right, this last article is titled, Hand of God in Quake, Retribution for D.C. Politics. As the swaying tremors of an earthquake rattled up the East Coast yesterday, so too did split-second explanations for the jolts that shook the nation's capital. Was it a terrorist attack, a sign of the apocalypse, a wake-up call from God? Now, some may say this is a good thing, but keep in mind who is preaching in the articles. These are authors, preachers, and other people that simply don't walk with God as they should. Seeing how they are already blind to his will due to their denial of his truth, they will naturally come up with unbiblical ways to fix the problem as prophecy predicts. Since they don't understand biblical jurisprudence in the first place, Rome's suggestion of Sunday laws will be seen as a good idea to them. Prophecy says they will look to God to stop the calamity. So, articles like this will become more and more frequent as we get closer to them actually enforcing the mark of the Roman beast. I hope and pray you were blessed by what was just shared in this video. God bless.